Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Things We Know. I'm Lisa Callian. And I'm Karen Warren. And today I am so excited to share Sherry Turner with you all. Um, we have known each other, gosh, about four years now. We met in our networking, professional networking group, and became fast friends on a distance, six foot distance apart walk during COVID because she lives here in the LA area. And I just, I adore her. She is the founder and creator of Video, which I'm going to spell P-H-I-D-E-O. It's an app that helps you connect videos with photos. And it is brilliant. And we're going to hear more about it here in a few minutes, but I am just so thrilled that you're here, Sherry. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you guys are amazing. Thank you for having me. What a lovely intro. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> welcome, welcome. So yeah, I've already said she's she's the founder of Fidio. She is um, a regional vice president for a skincare and health health and wellness company. She's been married for 42 years. She has two phenomenal daughters, three amazing grandchildren. So you can imagine all the things she has accomplished with all of those creds behind her name. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm so happy to meet you too. I, I would love to just start off with a little bit more of your story because it's really fascinating to me and inspiring. Um, and also just because of the wisdom and perspective you've already shared with us that I got to read, I got to assume that came from a lot of great lessons and experiences. So I would love to just hear some of the main stepping stones that brought you into such success. Oh, thank you so much, Carrie. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, as I was thinking about uh, sharing on this pod and being with you too, I it struck me that um, when I first started out in my career out of college, um, every single position that I've ever held was newly created. So I've never stepped into a position that was held by anybody else. And I just think that's so interesting. So unusual. Yeah. Really crazy. So I uh, started out in retail and um, was in buying, found that that just didn't really feed my soul. I didn't feel like I was really doing and nothing, you know, there's casting no aspersions, but for me personally, it was just not, um, I didn't feel like I was somehow really helping humanity at a level that I really wanted to be doing that. And uh, the next thing I heard about was um, a company that was just a uh, family held, just had been bought up by a corporation. They were looking, they had never had a budget before. They were looking for a budget controller and needed a CPA. So it was uh, in the height of the 1982 recession. Mm. And you guys probably weren't even born then. And um, we were. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I, uh, Oh, it took about six months, but I convinced them that they did not need a CPA. They needed me. I was going to say, you're not a CPA. <laughs> oh, no. I have to take off my shoes just to finish a math problem that is simple. <laughs> and uh, when I got home, I, I told my husband and he goes, oh, my gosh, do they know? And I said, no, and don't tell them either. OK, so <laughs> we made it through that. I wanted to be on the executive panel of that company. It was run by vibrant young people, um, great president and CEO. They came up with a new position for me, got me on that board. So that was super fun. And then um, my husband and I really, we, our first daughter came along and um, really started kind of looking at how our lives were unraveling mm. and unraveling quickly. I was working 12 hour days. He was a budding attorney um, at a new firm. And um, there was one day when he just, I got home late. I visited stores on my way home and he said, what is happening to our lives? We need you hundred percent. And mm. That day earlier at the office, I had heard from the president and the CEO, and they said, we need you 120%. You got to be here on weekends. And I just started crying and I thought, okay, that's 220 and I got 100. So we prayed about it and I left work and decided to be a stay-at-home mom and did that for the next 20 years. Um, didn't know how we were going to make that work with... Um, losing a whole income, we decided that it was more important to not be able to buy a new home, not be able to buy another car, 
not be able to go on vacation because raising our family was first and foremost for us and raising good humans. And um, God bless that decision abundantly. Within six months, he, he had made up my lost income, which was oh, wow. insane. So anyway, fast forward after being at home for 20 years. Um, but in all that time, I was uh, serving in the community, PTA president, you know, doing all of those things. I, after I retired from my business and stayed home, two weeks later, um, decided to start a new business called Coochie Coo Designs. And we were the first people to come up with patterned car seat covers with matching burp pads. And wow. so that's- wow kind of always been in the background. And after four years, we dissolved that as we both went on, had more children. So yeah. So after that, uh, 20 years, fast forward, I heard about a company that started itching at my brain. That was 2005. And I heard about this whole thing about not trading time for money. Mm -hmm. That's a very intriguing concept because the thought of being in an office makes me feel like I'm a cage lion. Mm. So, um, yeah. So started that business, grew that business, um, have a beautiful team across the United States. That's just amazing. Get to pee, help people with their health and wellness. And then, uh, a couple of two years ago, almost to the day had an idea that, um, was video and pairing photos that actually come alive with videos from them. So, um, yeah. That's incredible. And it was this born from being a grandparent? Like, was this a, oddly enough, I want to say it wasn't, but it was Carrie because, uh, the kids had all just left and I was gonna, I have always for ever since the girls were little, we've, I've always done scrapbooks or photo albums mm. and, you know, done the, uh, from all of our trips or whatever. So the kids had just left and I went to compile it and I'm like, how can we be living in this century and not have a video that comes alive out of a page of a book that should exist. So I started hunting down, uh, somebody that I trusted in the tech world, got some good input and my husband said, okay, let's just try it. And there we go. Cool. Really can, cool. can you, um, just for our listeners who don't know anything about it, can you explain it a little? Cause my mind's just going, well, you know, my, I have a son <laughs> studying in New Zealand right now and we live for the like photos and videos he sends, you know, but we're on different time zones. So it would be great to just, you know, have a place where he keeps them and sends them that we could look at anytime we're missing him. So I, I think of it, immediately I was thinking of my in-laws and my mom, how much they just live for stuff from their grandchildren and all that. So I would love to hear how it works. Oh, thank you. So yeah, that's the thing. I, um, in thinking about it, we have, you know, our phones, right. And we've got all these videos that are living in it and we never go back. People are taking pictures of their food and they're videotaping in the restaurant. We, we just lose all that. And that was the one thing that hit me was that when we have a photo, it's that one snapshot of time, but there's a whole story, like you're saying, that goes around with it. So to be able to have a printed image, so it's from a printed image, you can um, actually have that video by hovering your phone camera over the, the photo, have it actually come to life with a video that you have paired with it through the app. You can also go through the app and see the photo and the the um, video attached to it. Isn't That's that amazing. It's amazing. I mean, like, it'd be so cool if you make, you could make like a photo book, take all of Peter's photos and then the videos he sent and make like a photo book with it and embed these. I mean, that's what I want to do for Charlotte, like at the end of her senior year with everything. Like I just keep making her send me all the videos and all the photos because that's my vision for the end of her school year. It's so fun. And it takes um, about three nanoseconds to make a video. And um, so it's literally just pulling it up in your phone, pulling the photo up, pairing a video that you want to go with it. 
But, you know, Carrie, one thing that you said that was so interesting too is your in-laws. And about the time that I was uh, starting out with video and coming up with this idea, my mom was passing away. Mm -hmm. And that was a real push for me for mm -hmm. our grandchildren to be able to see their Gigi and have her beautiful picture, see their grandpa that they, their great grandpa that they did not know and be able to hear them, see mm. them joking, get a sense of their personality with it being easy right mm. there at home, not having to yeah. pull out projectors or set up a DVD or whatever. I love this. I'm thinking of a couple of things. One, um, I purchased a few years back StoryWorth for my mom and mother-in-law, which is, you know, it's one of those apps that will prompt them with questions to tell about your life, you know, and my mother-in-law is so good about like uploading old, old photos that go with her stories. It's incredible, but wouldn't that be cool, right? And then I'm also thinking about Amy Pickard's good to go um, resource and how cool that would be to have photos as part of that. So like, I wonder about the cross app opportunities here for you. Oh my goodness. And, you know, truly the, all the, <laughs> absolutely. Um, all of the photo books that are yeah. being built that, you know, when I say built, uh, printed and sent to our homes, you know, and we all love those, but literally being able to turn the page, just have your phone there and see the video. It's, it, there's so many uses and what ends up happening is that, you know, I started out with this idea and then you start growing it. Well, why can't we have a video home where you walk in and just the photos are just coming to life and of uh, billboards and movie posters and all kinds of you know, all kinds of affiliates that are out there impossible. It's just truly mind blowing and super fun. So exciting. It's so it fun. is. It's so exciting. Love it. And the link to the app will be in the show notes. And if you're on our mailing list and you get all of our emails, the links will be in there. So you can download it right away and start using it for over the holidays. Yay. No, I'm thinking of holiday cards. Just so fun. Isn't that fun? It's like we used to, I never did, but write those, you know, the yeah. Christmas letters and you get, now you can just hover your phone over a Christmas card and have the whole family come to life with a great message. I think it would be so great to like have just a nice formal photo and then all of a sudden have a really goofy video, like the ones <laughs> I was showing you earlier, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie's the king of uh, goofy videos or yeah. queen, I should say. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, Carrie and I talk a lot in this pod around the things we've gone through. Of course, it's called the things we know. You've had a lot of challenges, especially, maybe not a lot, but you've had some significant health challenges over your life. And that, can you share with us sort of like the gifts that have come out of that? Because, you know, most people think, oh, health challenges, but every time, not only have you rose to the occasion, but you've gotten something out of it. Would you mind sharing some of that? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, the Prior to this most significant or most recent one, my husband goes, can you just get something that everybody else has? Why does it <laughs> have to be so unusual? <laughs> but um, about what led me into the health and wellness and skincare arena was um, a bacterial blood infection. Mm -hmm. And had I, my husband not gotten me to the ER that, uh, that day in 2004, I wouldn't be here. Um, it was... Uh, very significant. It took me about six months to recover. Mm. But the lesson that I learned from that um, was a lot of humility. Mm. Uh, you know, I think um, a lot of us are so used to being the one on the other side of the door, knocking and holding the casserole. And yep. it's very different to be the one accepting and to learn to accept because that's a gift that you're giving others. Yep. And the other thing that was very um, humbling was I figured out that God really doesn't need me so much to like make this world spin. So for six <laughs> months, I was sitting there going, wow, you're pretty good on your own. I get, <laughs> That's pretty wild. But yeah. um, so there was that. And then as I <laughs> mentioned, um, and, uh, you know, I was told I, I would never have a thyroid that functioned again, had Hashimoto's that came out of that all this other stuff, but it got me on a great health, um, 
journey for those next 20 years. Um, and so I'm super grateful for all of that. Um, and then and this, all the people you've helped. It's so, it's right? just joy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So maybe that was God's plan, right? He was like, I need oh. Sherry to help these other people. Right. <laughs> you know what he was doing. Just sit back for six months, girl. Right, and, right. And then you can get out there and do it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and um, and then this most recent one has, uh, I mentioned my mom was passing away. And um, the week that she passed, it became very evident to me that something was not going right. I had been ignoring for about eight months just because I was um, taking care of mom. And um, I went to the doctor that started a process that then came up with a brain tumor diagnosis. <laughs> so that was uh crazy. Mom and I always like to do things like she had a brain tumor at one point. <laughs> and, oh, wow. Wow. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's crazy, but um, all kidding aside, this uh, has been fairly interesting. It's a rare uh, tumor that sits on my balance nerve on the right side. And um so last November, the 12th of November, um, I uh, woke up and something was dry. I could not get my my head to function with my body to work with my feet and was just all over the place. And so we got to the ER. Um, I had just started physical therapy for balance. And um, so I've been going for now almost a year and it's been phenomenal. So I knew that, um, I had my three grandchildren moving in with us. Our Carrie, our, um, daughter and son-in-law live overseas typically. And this year they're here oh, wow. and moved in with us. And so I knew that I had these little babies arriving and I needed to get well. So I hit physical therapy as if I were training for the Olympics. And, um, but I will say the November 12th date was significant because that happened, but I was super proud of our video team because I had said my birthday's on the 14th. We have to go alpha version live in the app store then. And I could barely sit and do anything at the computer. We got it done and we went live and it was like, we did. <laughs> That's incredible. I just got chills. That's yeah. so nice. So I love it. I, um, you said something in your, you know, um, we, we, we get notes from our ahead of time when we're going to meet with people. And I loved what you said. You said, I believe we're given our stories to share for the benefit of others. And I love that. We always say as coaches, you know, your struggle is your greatest gift, right? Like it's, it, if, if you are able to really share what you learn from it for others, then it, it makes it slightly more worth it, right? <laughs> if it can, if it can um, help you and others going forward. And you listed so many cool things that really struck me, like the power of forgiveness, trusting oneself, the value of being of service, learning the importance of self-talk, value of positive information. And this one I wanted to ask you more about, surrounding yourself with the kind of people you want to become. Can you say more about that? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've always been the person who I know that I know what I know and I know what I don't know. And so without sounding too self-deprecating, I know that, you know, in a lot of decks, I won't be the ace. And so it's smart to pull in the aces. And so in surrounding ourselves with people who are striving to do the kind of things that you want to do, who are going to be those people that are making you reach a little bit more, be better. Um, you know, if you are, I don't know, trying to lose weight and you sit on a couch and you've got friends who all just want to sit and eat potato chips and watch TV, you're not going to feel good, right? But that's a choice that you've made. And so I think those choices are, they're just super important. Who are you surrounding yourself with? There were, you know, times, um, and I think this is a, a difficult thing to do, um, is to know when a friendship should be over. Um, if somebody is not, you're not serving them well, and they're not serving you well, 
then it may be the best to separate. And I learned that actually in high school, there was a, a girl who I just, I just loved hanging out with her, but I found <laughs> that um, I was envious of her lifestyle, her family, what they had, like at that age, um, those physical, you know, things, those tangible things were very important, I thought. And I finally had to stop being her friend because I thought I am going to turn into a really ugly person if I continue doing this. And I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's really surrounding yourself with those people who are going to help you be better. And they might be great people, but they might not be the people you need at that time. Mm -hmm. Love that. Yeah, that's wow. That's really powerful. I think that's because I think we especially at that age. Wow. That's I am sorry. I'm just kind of taking that story in. Because that's just, I don't think, who has that kind of um, uh, self-awareness as as a high schooler that you could see that coming um, around that? Well, well yeah, yeah, like to, to know who's good for you and who isn't when you yeah. might be insecure enough to think like, I can't afford to lose friends, right? <laughs> yeah. But you can if you, I mean, I, I hear that and I also think about like I've, I've talked to my kids about this just because a friendship ends doesn't mean it wasn't good. It just might right. mean like it's a time for your paths to go in different directions, right. you know? Um, and, and maybe you taught each other the lessons you were meant to teach each other, or you were, you gave each other the gifts you were meant to give. And you can always feel fondly about that friendship without feeling guilty that it's over. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. There, there was a thing. And now, once again, I my menopause brain, I've forgotten it. And I've asked you twice to bring this up in other conversations that we've had. You said something in one of our networking meetings that I loved um, about turning a page. And now it's completely out of my brain. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Uh, Can you help me? <laughs> it was, um, yeah, a, an amazing woman that I've had the privilege to know went through a very difficult um, health uh, thing. Um, anyway, she now has, uh, podcasts and she's, a an amazing, um, Christian speaker all over the United States, well sought after has a camp. Um, she's still in wheelchair and, um, all this started when she was 23, 25. Mm. Um, but one thing that, that she had said was, and I just loved it, Lisa, was that, Sometimes we can look at what's going on in our life and it looks so dark and it can look, you know, it's almost like when you have the flu, you, you're like, I am never going to be well again. This yeah. is it. Yeah. And the next day you're fine. Yeah. But it's just that it's a page out of the entire story that God is writing about you and allowing you to live out. And so it's just a page and yeah. to help put things into perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It kind of goes back to, and I remember that's why it landed for me because it is the idea of everything is temporary, mm -hmm. good, bad, and ugly. Right. And and we have already had that episode, but when you said that, I just remember thinking, oh, that is such a beautiful way of looking at it that, and, and a beautiful way of looking at being present, you know, which I think you are really good at. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've always been good at being present? Um. I don't know. I've never really thought about it, I guess. I, what I do know um, is that uh, I don't like to live in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I was raised, it's like with kind of the attitude of, well, that, that was great, but what have you done for me lately? Mm. <laughs> so it's like, that, that kind of keeps you pushing ahead to always, you know, we can always be better. We can do more. We can help more. We can, you know, all of that. So yeah. Um, yeah yeah with, with that uh, sorry I, I was stepping over you Carrie were go you, ahead. you go well ahead. I was just going to sort of ask you know again we're obviously you know our audience our audience is sort of mid life early mm. midlife <laughs> and you know but it's a time where um oftentimes the women that are listening the women we're working with they are craving a new direction. They're craving something else. You know, they're they're waking up and they're looking around and thinking, this can't be all there is. And you have done so many different things. And it sounds like it's all sort of happened in some ways organically, but what, do you have any advice around 
just for a woman who is looking for a new direction or trying to figure out what her next steps are? Um, yeah. Um, one thing that I, <laughs> I never think about sharing this, but what hit me a couple of years ago, um, and I think this is good to share for people in that position is I really took a look at my life and went, okay, what are my goals here mm. for this next section? What do they really look like? And I came up with an acronym for myself and it's setting wise goals. So are they worthy? Are they inspiring? Are they satisfying? And are they enduring? Ooh, I love this. Worthy, and, inspiring. I'm, I'm writing this down because this may become a post. <laughs> Worthy, inspiring. Satisfying. Ooh, satisfying. Okay. Enduring. Like, enduring. Oh, so, those are good. <laughs> for me personally, my focus has always been family. So I come from that place of um, everything that I've done has gone through a a lens of wanting to be the example for my daughters mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. see somebody, you know, that even if I'm not feeling confident at that moment, that maybe they'll think I'm confident or because, you know, it's just, it's just being the best that I can be for them as a role model has always been my goal. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing too, that I think in setting goals is, um, to come to grips with the fact that there are no neutral steps that you would either take a step towards your goal and all your decisions, or you're taking a step away from it, but you can't ever claim that it was neutral because if you haven't done something for it, you've done something away from it. Right. Um, and that's okay to do, but you just need to take responsibility for that time piece that maybe it didn't happen. So, you know, let's say you're in that time of life where you're really wishing that you had a life partner and that you really would love to, you know, do that. What are you doing to not necessarily, you know, well, I've got all the apps and I'm doing this and I'm swiping this way and I'm da da da. You know, <laughs> it's not necessarily that, but it's just like, are you surrounding yourself with people that are positive that can help you? Are you saying the right things to yourself? Are you being open? Because, you know, I mean, we live in an energetic world and energy is everything. Right. And so how are you presenting yourself inside? What are you saying to yourself? So you can go out and be the best and attract in what you would like to attract in. So, um, yeah. So I think it's probably those two things, setting the right kind of goals for yourself. Those are what I've decided would be the best for me. And, and it helps you say no as a woman. I mm. love know. that. <laughs> <laughs> Our next episode that we're recording right after you is the power of no. So that was yes. perfect. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like you just teed us up. It's yep. so great. So yeah, I mean, considering what you've shared here and what you just said, um, I I'm, I'm imagine that boundary setting has been really key for you in, in just how you live your life and how you've taught your daughters how to live their lives. Um, I didn't learn that until later in life. Mm -hmm. And um, I still not may not be the best at it, especially when it comes to family. I almost have no boundaries when it comes to family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I do. I take, you know, I take care of myself first, but um, and I, I'm really proud of my older daughter, who's the, the mother of three. And she goes, you know, you got to take the oxygen first. Otherwise, who are you going to be there for? And so that I'm really super proud of. But um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And is there anything like around health or age or you know, if we, if, if we have listeners going, well, that's all fine and dandy, but I can't, I won't, I can't, they, they, they're throwing up the, their own blocks around their age, around their health, around their abilities. What would you say to them to help them go after the things that they want? Because it, again, while I think these positions, it, it sounds like your life is very organically unfolded and you've also made opportunities from yourself for yourself from the get-go, as you said at the beginning. So what was the question, Lisa? 
what is what advice would you give around oh. that for somebody who is throwing up blocks for themselves? Right, 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 right. Um, it, it takes me back to when I started on my health journey. My blocks, and this is this is when I wasn't so great at boundaries. I was like, I got kids at home. I don't feel well. Give me the antibiotic. The doctor would say, well, you know, in eight hours, you should feel, I'm like, what do you have for four? You know, I, I don't have time like this. I got, I got to move. I got to do this stuff. And I don't want to be down because that hurts my family. If I'm, mm. if I'm not, mom's not working, it, it throws everybody else off. Okay. Um, I switched that around when I did then start to understand about the oxygen. <laughs> and it was like, no, you know what? Come, you got to come to grips with a few things. And um, I think it's taking a good, hard look at habits It's Mm -hmm. taking a good, hard look at what is ingrained. What do you tell yourself you can't do? Mm -hmm. Well, you can. You just have to, it's like those neutral steps. It's taking responsibility for what's coming out of your mouth and being open to saying, okay, well, if I'm not happy where I am here, how do I get happy? And what, what do I need to do to, to, you know, turn this around. Um, And sometimes it's not easy to do that on your own and why you have great coaches, Mm -hmm. you know, who can help you do that. Um, I know I have in the past and I still do. (laughs) So um, I think that's important, but I think it's really, it's owning up and taking responsibility. And then, you know, there are those platitudes that like I heard 20 years ago, 25, gosh, 25 ish years ago at a PTA meeting. And it was about how to say no. And I will never forget the list the you know, mimeograph list or something that they handed off to us. And I'm kidding. It wasn't mimeograph. I was going to say that's a, <laughs> that's a throwback. I almost forgot that word. Um, but one of the excuses was, no, I'm sorry. I'm having a lobotomy that day. And that has always, and the other one was, no, I'm sorry. I'm plucking my eyebrows that day. That's funny. <laughs> so it was like when I set myself up for, you know, having those boundaries and, and giving myself that, no, I tease myself with those things because it's like, you know what? You don't need a big excuse. No, nope. You just need to stay true to what your goals are, where you're going and know when it's right for you to say no. Hmm. I mean, even, even like the idea of asking those same questions, worthy, inspiring, satisfying, enduring, when you're being asked to take on a new project or a new whatever, you know, taking that moment to stop and step back and ask those four questions. I mean, why? I just love it. Yeah. Definitely turning that into a post. I know. I, I think we talk a lot about like, if you have a goal or if you have an intention like that, then everything you're about to put on your calendar can be filtered through it. Is this going to get me closer to that or further away from it? But I like this a lot. I like the four questions because, you know, it really good fine tunes what it is you're spending your time doing. It it. does. It totally does. And you know what, Carrie, that's so right. Because, you know, for me with um, being that, wanting that legacy of being that best role model. And now for two granddaughters um, and a grandson, but um, it's like, is this going to be enduring? Is this Mm -hmm. something they will remember, look back on and go, yeah, that was something she did. So I will do it and I'll do it even better. Oh, I love it. Enduring. That's such a wonderful word to linger with. It really is. I love it. Um, so Lisa told you, we love to feature a favorite song of our guests and we love to add them to, um, we'd love to, you know, like have the songs that represent our guests, but also add them to our playlist that's on Spotify. So you happen to bring a song, I believe. I did. I didn't, I had to write it down because it's kind of, uh, tricky. Okay. Um, it shouldn't be, but it, for me, it is, um, And the reason it's, um, the lyrics, the main lyrics and everybody will know it is, I wish that what I knew now. I knew when I was younger, something like that. Um, but uh, it, I don't think we necessarily want to know now, you know, or, or wish that when we were younger, we know what we did now, because it's in those lessons, in all the struggles, in all of the, the hardships, in all of that, that, you know, we learn how to get to the place that we are. And um yeah, I think it'd be like unwrapping Christmas too early. So anyway, 
It makes yeah. me think of, I don't know if you, I, I don't remember what song this is, but the Bob Seger song, it was my dad's favorite line from a Bob Seger song that said, I wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. Oh, so yeah. I, it's almost the opposite of that. Like, you know, there, which also, it does, you can't it, unknow things. You can't, can't unknow things, things. but I, I, I sort of get that vibe too of like, you know, sometimes, you know, things, the things you can't unknow, you wish you could. Exactly. Yeah. So for I sure. Definitely things we wish we could unsee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. The list is long. <laughs> I, I love that song. And, and um, we also talked about, and we wouldn't have been able to put this on Spotify either, but we also talked about um, the, oh my gosh, now I'm losing it. The uh, the song we had originally, the Joni Mitchell song. Oh, I know. Both Sides the, Now. Uh, yes. Yeah. Which is also a really great song. She is not on Spotify though. Talk about a woman that has no Fs left to give. She, her and Neil Young don't, are yep, not on Spotify. They're off. So we would not have been able to quote that one anyway, but I love that song as well. Cause I think yeah. that, and when you and I talked about that as being your song, that also does feel very in alignment with where you are. I think from a standpoint of not only as a career woman and an entrepreneur all these years, but as a mom and as a grandma, you've seen a lot go on <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> I know it's crazy to be at, uh, at this place. It's cricket. You know, I was, you know, it's like, you're always used to being the young mom. Mm -hmm. and it's like, okay. Can I be the young grandma? You know, <laughs> it's just, it's just a, a funny place in life to be, but I'm, I'm really loving it. Yeah. Well, I think you are the young grandma. I see all the things you do with your grandkids and how lucky both your daughters and your grandkids are to have you so present in their life that talk about enduring, you are leaving a a print on their hearts that will never, ever, ever go away and will be a legacy. You know, I mean, that's what I love about video for you and everything you're creating is you're, you just really are creating a legacy and this fun little idea that you just wanted to be able to see your kids, your grandkids on, on a still photo and look what it's created. And I really truly believe, and we've talked about this before, that the sky is the limit. What, who knows a year from now, if somebody's listening to this pod, they're going to be what video has already created and, and imprinted on this world. So I am so proud of you and so proud to call you a friend. And I'm just, I'm excited for the future. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are just the best. This has been just a fabulous opportunity. I've loved every minute of it. You guys are awesome. Is there any final words you would like to impart about your work or your wisdom? Um, I would say that whatever it is that, you know, we choose to do when we choose to do it, um, so that it, it kind of does go through those four steps. That's a good thing to make sure that what you're doing is serving others. Mm -hmm. And that at the end of the day, it's about how is somebody else's life going to be better by what you've done, by the fact that you were allowed to get up this morning and live this day and who will benefit from that and how will something, as you said, Carrie, you know, our, our stories, our, our testimonies, I think God gives us those, he gives us our struggles, he gives us our joys, he gives us our, um, our everything in order to help others. And so I think it's in that service that, um, whatever we're doing. I think if, if that's the attitude, um, it's going to be great. Yeah. I love that. Well, again, I'm so thankful that you came on here and shared all of this with our listeners. Uh, you're the app and all links for Sherry will all be in the show notes and our emails. I just, once again, want to just share my gratitude for you being here. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Um, well, thank you for listening, everyone. And if you found this episode inspiring, please consider sharing it with a friend who might enjoy it too, or with anyone who you think would love to hear about this app. I'm sure it's going to be great timing for the holidays. And as always, be sure to um, follow the pod in our post because you'll see a little bit more about Sherry and this wonderful acronym that she shared with us today. Um, and, and also just following us, make sure you're not going to miss what we have to share here. So thank you. Thanks everyone for listening. We'll be back next week. So long.